Hello everyone, we are a student of the UPA and we are going to present the topic of the rotation matrix. The team is made of, <coughs> of Garcia Chavarín, Eraní Guadalupe, Pérez Guzmán, José Antonio, Pérez Rosales, Julio César, and me, Montoya Padilla, Josué Abraham. Today we will talk about the rotation matrix that are used in robot kinematics to determine the orientation of a point. And what is orientation? Okay, the orientation is the direction of the robot to center point in polar coordinates. To find the position of a point by a segment, is coordinate system we use to a rotation matrix which indicates how much the point's coordinate system was rotated in reference to a reference coordinate system. It is necessary to know is the position and orientation with respect to the robot base. In addition to the position, it is necessary to define the orientation with respect to the reference system. It is important to mention that orientation in three-dimensional space is defined by three linearly independent degrees of freedom. Normally, two reference systems are used. If you have two reference systems, X, Y, and U and V, with the same origin but rotated by an angle, each vector of the reference system is and must be equivalent. With a rotation matrix R, the orientation of U and V with respect to the X, Y is defined. This information is from Instituto de Electrónica y Mecatrónica by the engineer Hugo Ramirez Leiva. As mentioned, the rotations will be made with respect to the X, Y, and zeta axis in three-dimensional, three differences rotation. As is imagined, we see something very important is uh, observed, and it is the direction of the angles. This means if we are going to per perceive them, if they rotate in a positive or negative way. We can base ourselves of the rule of the right hand, where so that our thumb is the direction of the axis that we want to rotate towards. Where we close our hands, this will indicate that it rotates in positive degrees. Now, to find the orientation with respect to a point in real, in real application, several rotations are normally used. One of them is to rotate theta above the x-axis, eta above the y-axis, and finally, eta above the z-axis. The resulting matrix is known as a transformation matrix. It is important to remember the order of the rotation since they are not commutative. Here is important to mention the rotation angles. Many times the rotation is not only in one axis as mentioned above, which means that the rotations can have different sequences. The two most used are the row, piece, and jaw, and Euler angles, where the former are rotated first in X, then in Y, and ending with zero. The rotations are made with respect to the reference frame, which is fixed and never moves. The sequence in Euler angles is rotated first on the zero axis, then on Y axis, and finally an X axis. Each axis varies and remains different in each rotation. Knowing all the mentioned before, it is clear that mainly in three-dimensional way we have three rotation matrices, one of each axis, with the parameters in sines and cosines, where this will be multiplied in case the system has more than one rotation. In the explanation of the application of the rotation matrix, we will see how the rotation matrix is obtained a rotation in X, rotation in J, and rotation in Z. The rotation matrix allows us to algebraically define the rotation chains of the robot element in 3D space. In this analysis, an angle in which it is rotating with respect to the origin axis is considered. In the following figure, we can see two coordinate systems, 0 and 1, as can be seen the origins of the of this system coincide, but their orientation is different. At the same time, we see that zeta 0 and zeta 1 are coincident. This means that system 1 had a rotation in zeta axis at a certain angle, which in this case is theta. Being 
being j not the new orientation of j0 and x0 the change of x0. Now we are looking for the way to represent the orientation of system what with respect to zero based on the angle that differentiates them and for this it is necessary to know the components of each vector along the x j axis. In the figure, we can see that one A1 and A2 are components on X1 and B1 and B2 will be the components of J1. The sum of this component is the way in which the new orientation of an axis is represented. It is necessary to know the to know the components in order to see what the rotation of the system one is with respect to zero. Being in three dimension, it can be have chains in three axes. We know that is the rotation zeta because it remains in the same orientation. Zeta one is equal to zeta zero. So the only ones that change the rotation are x and e, y. So we look for the lengths of these vectors. It's important to consider the size we refer to system zero. The components of the vector j one is equal to minus b one. If we consider that both systems are made up for of the unit vectors, we find the position of the vectors. The following vectors indicate the rotation of each of the axes j, x, and zeta, although zeta remains in the same orientation. We make the vectors a single three for three matrix, which will be rotation rotation in zeta. The first column indicates the position on x of the system one with respect of x zero. The second column indicates the change of j with respect to j zero, and the last column indicates the rotation of zeta. But since zeta remains in the same rotation, zeta is equal to one. The previous analysis was done based on the rotation of set axis. In the following figure, we see which are the rotation matrix in the case of X and J. We can recognize if a matrix responds to X, J, or zeta, if we can see where is the one. In the if the one is in the sec in the first column in, and in the first row, it is rotation in X. In the case that the one is in the second column in the second row, we will 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 be a rotation in J sines zeta zero is equal to J one. J J zero is equal to J one. Just as we see in a unitary matrix, we will know that there is not a rotation since X remains and X zero, J one and J zero, is zeta one and zeta zero. Now let's talk about how to use the rotation matrix. To identify in which case we can use the rotation matrices, we have to check that two axes change orientation with respect to the remaining axis. That is, if the X and Y axis change, the zeta remaining fits it. Let's check the following case. We can see that there is no rotation in the system, only translations. Since X, Y, and Z axis remain in the same direction, in case there is rotation, we must work with the homogeneous matrix. We will see the homogeneous matrix in the next video. In the following system, there is a rotation. First, in the it is a zero rotation that is the x and y axis rotates about the zero axis and if we use the right hand rule we see that the rotation is positive then we see that the x and zero axis change the orientation with respect to the y axis so it is a rotation in y finally the x and y axis rotates about the Zeta axis again. It is important to mention that rotation matrices are not commutative, so if if the same rotation are performed in a different order, 
the result is different. Uh, there is observed in the video when we are taking nets and zero axis. In the, res the result is different because in one start with zero axis and the second one start with uh, x axis. To define the position of the point with respect to the original plane, with a mathematical explanation, we must solve the following system of matrices. Uh, but first, now we will see what happens if we apply apply it to a point. If we rotate the system, the point change will the point will change position with respect to the original plane, and it remaining at the same point in a rotated plane. So to work with a mathematical process. We multiply the rotation matrix with the point, and the result we obtain is the point uh, in a new position with respect to the original plane. But the point is is equal in with respect to the to the rotated plane. So to calculate the position of the point. When performing several rotations, we must multiply the rotation matrices in order, and at the end of the result matrices is multiplied with the position of the point. Now we are going to do an um, example. We are given this problem, and it says that we have two rotations, one in X of 45 degrees, and the other in C of 90 degrees. At the same time, we have a point. As each rotation matrix was previously present, only the degrees that rotate are um, substitute. In the case of rotation X, the value is root of 2 over 2 in the case of cosine and sin. And in C, it is 0 for cosine and 1 for sin. The solution can be obtained as the next way. The, so the first row by the first column gives give us the result of the first value of the three by three, by three matrix. The, um, the second row by the first column give, give us the value of the position column one, row two. And to the finish, the first column, we need to multiply the third row by the first column so we know the value of the column position row column one and row three and we carry out the procedure with the two remaining columns so row by column is multiplied and as a result of the rotations we have another matrix now this is multiplied by the point in the same way as before, and we obtain the resulting point. It only remains to wrap the original system, the rotated system, and the new point with respect to the original system. To plot the new frame of reference, it was first rotated 45 positive degrees in X, that is to the left of what the X axis looked light, like. After the C axis is rotated 180 degrees to the left again because they are positive degrees and we get X1, Y1 and C1. The start point is in the same position as the end point used in the new reference frame. And this is the way we finish the exercise. And we have the result, the result in X is less 1, in y is less 2.1, and in c is 4.9. In the graph, we can see the new system of reference, or the x1, y1, and c1, respect to the original system reference. And we can see the two points, the, po the initial point and the final point.
Um, this is all for the subject. The subject was matrix of rotation. And we are going to talk about the homogeneous matrix in the next video.